My name is Allison Kaplan. I am Director of Education at the National First Ladies Library, located at the National First Ladies Historic Site in Canton, Ohio. I have my screen up sharing some of the future events here um, from the National First Ladies Library. And I wanna mention a few of them to you, as well as giving you some directions about um, Zoom. If you are new to Zoom, or if you're watching us on Facebook Live or YouTube after the fact, I just want to Thank you for joining us this evening and let you know that if you're watching this live and you have to leave or if there's someone that you want to share this program with, these programs are recorded and they are available through the National First Ladies Library YouTube page as well as streaming and saved on our Facebook page. If you have a question for tonight's speaker, please either use the chat or Q&A box um, and we will address those questions um, towards the end of the evening's festivities. Um, we will also be monitoring any questions or comments on Facebook. So if you would like to share anything with us um, there, you are welcome to. Um, hopefully you can hear me. Um, I'm hearing that some people aren't getting audio um, but it looks like my microphone is on. Um, so um, I want to mention a few upcoming programs. And if you can hear me, just give me a thumbs up in the chat. Um, our next program for um, the Legacy Lecture for the National First Ladies Library is July 7th at noon. That is a virtual talk and it features Ann Lowe. Um, Ann Lowe, if you are not familiar with her, is an amazing uh, fashion designer and she is the um, designer of Jacqueline Kennedy's wedding dress as well as other um, major uh, debutante gowns and we actually have a small exhibition of her work at in the lower level of the National First Ladies historic site right now. So if you are local to us or traveling through um, Northeast Ohio this summer, please feel free to stop by. We have a number of her perfume gowns in our collection. They're really glorious. And Michelle Gullion, who is our speaker tonight, will be speaking about Ann Lowe next month and give us some insight to her career. And again, she is a couture um, African-American fashion designer who um, was amazing. And we're really excited to be cheerleaders for her role in history. Um, here at National First Ladies Library. So do stop by for that. If you are local to us, uh, we will be hosting the next First Ladies Night in Canton um, at First Ladies Park right next to the historic Saxton McKinley House on June 28th at 6 p.m. We have just a few slots left for that class, but we're gonna be working with local artist, Kat Francis. We're gonna look at some Caroline Harrison um, China, um, uh, some examples, uh, some images and talk about her work. And then we're actually gonna do some watercolor. So we're excited about that and that should be really cool. Um, and then the other two things I wanna mention, we have a film series where you can screen a film online through the Stark Library or through your local library. And we will be screening the film Underexposed. It's about women in skateboarding. I just got a chance to see it today. It is really fabulous. And we're gonna be talking to Megs Gelfgott um, from Keep Her Wild as part of our discussion. It's a really cool Ohio-based organization that promotes uh, women in skateboarding and does all sorts of events related to skateboarding throughout the state. So we're excited about that. And we are continuing our book club in August. We are reading the great new biography that just came out about Eleanor Roosevelt. So if you are like me and you cannot get enough of info about Eleanor, um, it is a big, thick book, but it's a really quick, addictive read. So whether you're a beach reader um, or an audiobook uh, listener, 
please uh, download it or grab a copy at your local library and give it a listen and sign up for our book club. It's a really, really fun um, discussion group and that's taking place in August. You can find out any um, about any of these programs through the National First Lady's Facebook page or sign up via Eventbrite. Um, without further ado, it's wedding season. So we have been knee deep in weddings from Ida McKinley's anniversary and our recent reenactment to um, the Johnson wedding that we're gonna talk about in a minute to Jacqueline Kennedy's amazing wedding dress. So we are super excited tonight to travel back in time to the 1960s. And without further ado, I am gonna turn things over over to our Director of Collections and Research, Michelle Gullion. And uh, Michelle is going to share her amazing talk and research with you tonight. Hi, Allison. Thank you so much. Um, welcome, everyone. I hope you enjoy tonight's um, program. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, if uh, you uh, know anything about um, the, the Johnson girls, if you remember their weddings, um, both Lucy and Linda Bird got married in the 1960s. L Lucy, the youngest, got married in 1966. And then um, uh, Linda Bird got married in 1967. So um, what I'm going to be doing tonight is we're going to talk about mainly Linda Bird because we have lots of artifacts from her wedding. Um, we're going to see some film footage, and um, if you love recipes, you're in for a treat. I will be showing you a recipe on how to make her uh, wedding cake that was in the newspaper. We're going to start with Linda Bird and talk to you a little bit about her. Linda Bird Johnson was born on March 19, 1944, to Lyndon and Lady Bird Johnson. Her name was chosen as a combination of both her parents' names because they were so thrilled to have a child. Uh, Lady Bird had uh, suffered many miscarriages um, during their 10 years of marriage. So to have Linda was quite thrilling for both of them. They were just over the, over the moon to have a child. And then they didn't know, if, and they didn't know if they'd have any more, but three years later, Lucy Baines Johnson was born on July 2nd, 1947. Linda was an outgoing child and a very good student. Um, she was so smart, but, uh, and she had a very keen sense of humor. A lot of the, the uh, media didn't know this about her, but she was very, 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 very funny. And um, she also had a really keen sense of politics because um, she was kind of, um, she was, it was in her DNA, clearly. She was also a very shy introvert and as she grew, she became quite tall. She was five, she was five uh, feet, 10 inches tall, quite tall. Um, she was attending the University of Texas in Austin and she, where she majored in history when her father became vice president in 1961. After the assassination of John F. Kennedy in 1963, Lady Bird insisted that Linda transfer to George Washington University in Washington. She wanted Linda to be, to be closer to them in the White House, not only because of her own safety and the, the times being as they were, but um, Linda and Lady Bird were quite close. The mother and daughter were quite close. Um, they were awful, an awful lot alike, uh, very uh, calm, pra practical kind of people. Um, uh, she and her mother, um, even uh, Linda, even accompanied Lady Bird on her whistle top stop tour on the Lady Bird special in 1964 for the presidential campaign. Because of the high profile of Jackie Kennedy's fashion in the media, I mean, the media was still just uh, consumed with how wonderful uh, the White House was because of Camelot and all that. The press constantly reported on the fashion and style of the three Johnson women. Often, the two daughters, Lucy and Linda, were played against each other by the press. Um, I read some just amazing things. Um, they would comment on 
um, their weight. They would con uh, talk about their hairstyles. They would talk about if they were dressed too formal, not formal enough, how well they wore things. It was a really, uh, if you have to understand, right after Jackie Kennedy, they're still wanting that uh, high fashion thing that was happening, not only with the first lady, but with her, their daughters. Um, and so they were, their uh, wardrobes and hairstyles were criticized right along with their mother. When the Johnsons moved into the White House in 1964, there was already speculation about a White House wedding because Linda was wearing an engagement ring uh, by, of Bernard Rosenbaugh's. He uh, served in the US Navy. They had dated since 1961, and though no, but there was no formal engagement that was ever announced. And in April of 1964, it was announced that she had returned his ring and uh, the, the engagement was broken. This was quickly followed. They, they, they loved to, to find out about uh, Lady Bird or Linda Bird's um, uh, love life. Uh, she was then, uh, she was connected with the New York stock broker, David Laviv. He was a Marine Lieutenant and he was serving as a White House military aide. And in this picture, Here's Lviv, he, uh, he even accompanied her to the inaugural ball in 1965. However, by that summer of 1965, Linda was dating Brent Eastman and he was a medical student. Um, and here she is, she's visiting his family in, in Wyoming and then they went on a ski trip in Utah. Um, so uh, there was lots of speculation that he was the one for Linda. However, towards the end of 1965, Lucy began to get lots of media attention as she was seen with Patrick John Nugent. And the speculation was high that there was engagement coming. As you can see, is it romance or rumor? <laughs> sure enough, it was romance. And on Christmas Eve of 1965, the much awaited formal announcement came from the White House. Um, it was announced that she was going to have a summer wedding in 1966. However, many, many people, the American public, were disappointed that Lucy was not going to get married in the White House. Lucy had become, uh, she had uh, changed her faith into the Catholic faith. And so uh, she decided that she wanted to get married at the, um, at the, the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception there in Washington, DC. The reception was held at the White House, but the, the, the service hap was there. This happened on one of the hottest days in August in Washington, DC. And there, there was absolutely no air conditioning in this church. And this Catholic service lasted for well over an hour. At one point, Linda Bird, who was serving as the maid, the maid of honor, uh, uh, got so, uh, she was so hot, she was standing there that she actually shrank down and sat down there in the, during the service and almost fainted. Um, I don't know that she did, but um, I've read that she did and she didn't. But anyway, poor thing, um, had a rough time of it there. At the, the, the reception was held though at the White House and I apologize for this grainy picture, but this is the only one I could find. What you're seeing at the very bottom of the screen, that is an aerial view of the White House. And there uh, at the very bottom, that's Lucy dressed in pink and she has just thrown the bridal bouquet, which as you're seeing, Linda Bird, uh, she uh, caught this. Um, the bridal bouquet during her sister's wedding. After her sister's wedding, oh my gosh, it was hot and heavy. Everybody was excited because Linda Johnson was uh, dating the very uh, gorgeous movie star, George Hamilton, Mr. Tan. Um, and oh my goodness, the, the press had a field day. Um, George Hamilton was not well liked by the president of the United States, <laughs> but Lady Bird did like him. 
She said later that George was extremely good for Linda. He really brought her out as a woman. They were quite the jet setters. In the spring of 1967, um, oh, excuse me, in the, in the um, this is in the 1966, uh, he took her to the Oscars. Um, and here she is uh, attending the Oscars with him. She went and visited him on movie studios. Um, they were just seen um, uh, left and right. Um, a lot of people were um, uh, noticed that, that she seemed much more glamorous. Her, her makeup was done differently, that type of thing. Um, but um, by night, this is them in December 29th of 1966. It says that they've just attended the church. Note the, the date, December 29th, 1966. Here she is with George Hamilton. She will be married by this time, a year from now. What was happening was by the spring of 1967, um, Hamilton was traveling. He was going all over. He was in all these movie sets. And Lady Linda had taken a part-time editorial job at McCall's Magazine. So this kind of made everybody think, okay, this really isn't the real thing going on here. This isn't a real romance. What a lot of people, what the press didn't know, but a lot, it was very common knowledge between friends and family was that Linda was seeing 28-year-old Charles S. Robb. Captain Robb was, uh, began working at the White House as a social aide in February of 1966. And he was tapped to play bridge because Linda Bird loved to play bridge. And he could play bridge, so um, that's how their romance bloomed. In the White House, the privacy of the White House, after several months of playing uh, bridge together. He proposed on August 10th, 1967 in the solarium of the White House. She was so excited that she woke her parents up and to tell them that she wanted to marry Rob. But they waited another uh, month. Uh, the formal announcement of their marriage was announced on September 10th, 1967. Um, and then it was, it was announced that they'd be married in, on no, uh, December 9th. So this seemed like a real whirlwind to the, the general public. So there was all this, who is Charles Robb, right? Well, uh, he, Charles Robb was born June 26th, 1939 in Phoenix, Arizona. His parents were James and Francis Robb, and he was the oldest of their four children. Uh, Rob's father was, the, it was in the airline business, and the family had lived in several states. Chuck lived in Arizona, Washington, Ohio, Virginia, and Wisconsin. And that's where um, the, his parents were living when um, they became engaged in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Chuck was to leave for Vietnam in, in March of, two, of uh, 1968. So that's why they set the date for December 9th. Linda uh, just so happened that her favorite color was red. So since the White House was already decorated for the holidays, it meant that it didn't make it that much harder for the White House staff to have to do anything uh, special. They just used the decorations within the White House. Lady Bird's uh, staff, though, uh, did most of the preparations, leaving uh, Linda and Charles to go to, they had like 69 uh, wedding showers. Um, they were all, there were several of them that were themed. Some of them were very, very formal. Some of them were fun and goofy. Uh, she had a, a, a lingerie uh, wedding. Uh, bridal shower and she had a kitchen bridal shower and she didn't said she didn't know how to cook at all. So um, she had lots and lots of uh, bridal showers and it was quite the whirlwind. There, there was lots of excitement about this White House wedding because there hadn't been a White House wedding in 53 years. The last one was when President Woodrow Wilson's youngest daughter, Eleanor Wilson, married William Gibbs McAdoo on May 7, 1914. Now, these are pictures of the dress and the wedding that's going on, but we're going to talk about some specifics here. 
the wedding dress. Okay, we got to know all about that. Okay, the wedding dress was a long sleeved architectural gown devoid of all lace, and it was designed by Jeffrey Bean. Um, this was not his normal thing, and he really didn't continue on with this. Uh, so when you hear Jeffrey Bean, you don't necessarily think wedding gowns, but this was the one that, that uh, Linda Bird wore. Her gown was characteristic of the late 1960s, she was, and she was considered a true winter bride. This was dress was made of heavy silk satin. Of course, I said it was long-sleeved, high-necked, and it was a, had a gathered mid-back train. She wore a very long, fluffy veil and carried a small bouquet of white flowers. This bouquet of flowers, by the way, caught a lot of flack. Um, they just felt like it wasn't big enough, <laughs> but it was what she wanted. So that's what she had. There were seven, brides, uh, seven bridesmaids and attendants in the wedding and they all wore long sleeve gowns of red velvet. And we'll see this in, in a little bit. Uh, the girls wore matching velvet bows with streamers in their hair. Again, you're gonna see that in a little bit. Um, and there were over 500 wedding guests that were arrived. Uh, the wedding took place at 4 p.m. in the East Room of the White House. Now, this is why I'm showing you this picture. All of the guests stood in the White House for the ceremony. Um, and part of the ceremony was, was captured on TV, live on TV. This is, of course, a very famous photo. It was also a military wedding. She was uh, with all of uh, uh, Captain Rob's uh, groomsmen were, were dressed in their, their um, military suits. So uh, it was a very uh, stunning, uh, very appropriate wedding for that time. This is a picture of uh, what happened during the um, uh, during the after the wedding is over. All the bridal party went up onto the yellow room, and this is a photo of, of showing you. They're up in the yellow room upstairs, and the guests that were down in the east room were asked to leave for this leave that area for the ceremony while the White House staff flipped the East Room for the reception. The platform that had staged the altar became the dais for the most famous musicians of the time, the Peter Duchesne Orchestra. Once they were in place, the East Room reopened after cocktails and the buffets were loaded and ready. <laughs> so it was quite the thing. Here's a formal fo photo of uh, the Robs with, uh, uh, there with his parents and Lady Bird and Lyndon Johnson on the right, on the, on the left-hand side. Now we're going to talk about this uh, cake. It ended, you could see them cutting this cake. Um, this cake was six feet tall. Uh, it's a pound cake and um, it was, it's just beautiful. It was gorgeous. Um, there was lots of talk about this cake. Um, it was a pound cake. And it was made with, as you can see here, with uh, white fondant icing. And uh, here we have the chef decorating it with sugar scrolls, loops, braids, roses, and lovebirds. And here, it was so popular, here is the recipe that you could make that they um, made so that you could make it at home. You need, for the ingredients, one pound sh powdered sugar, one pound butter, one pound cake flour, 12 eggs, flavor with mace and lemon rind. I don't know how, I guess to your, your taste. Uh, whip butter until light, add sugar and mix for three minutes. Add eggs two at a time and continue to mix. Finally, add the flour and mix lightly but fully. You bake in paper lined pans, I guess whatever size you want, and you bake at 275 degrees for approximately one hour. So anyway, um, you could make your own, uh, you could have your own uh, Lady Bird or L Linda Bird uh, Rob uh, wedding cake yourself. This, of course, was in the newspaper. And what you're seeing is just everywhere in the newspaper. Um, everyone had these kinds of things. As a lot of the pictures that you saw, I chose this one specifically because if you look there on the left-hand, lower left-hand side, 
George Hamilton came to the wedding. Pretty cool, huh? That's really neat. Um, and uh, uh, so the, the happy couple went on their honeymoon. They went to St. John's Island and uh, then they went and lived in Alexandria, Virginia for only three months uh, because uh, Chuck was heading to Vietnam. Right before he left for Vietnam, they took a second honeymoon in Acapulco, Al Acapulco, <laughs> Mexico, and um, before uh, Linda drove him to California to begin his combat duty. Um, she dropped him off uh, in California at Camp Pendleton on March 30th. He took a leave, he was on leave uh, for 13 months. Uh, his tour of duty was for 13 months and uh, Linda was newly pregnant. So uh, she left him on March 30th, 1968 uh, to go off to Vietnam. And she flew back to the White House on March 31st, the very next day. She was um, extremely sad. Um, uh, she was expecting a newly pregnant. Um, this was hitting her really hard. Uh, uh, Lucy's husband, Pat, Patrick Nugent, was already in Vietnam. And uh, when she saw her father, she asked, why do we have to go to Vietnam? And that very night, he gave his very famous speech that he would not seek, he would not run for office again as president on that very night. So um, this really hit home very hard for the Johnsons. Rob served in Vietnam with pride and uh, he commanded his battalion of Marines in combat uh, where, and he was awarded the Bronze Star and he was also awarded the Vietnam Gallantry Cross with the Star, with Star. Following his promotion to rank of major, he was attached to the logistics station of the 1st Marine Division. Linda was determined to keep a positive attitude and she returned to work at McCall's, wrote daily letters to her husband, made talking tapes to him, baked cookies for him, uh, made, played lots of bridge with her friends and she attended the theater with Lady Bird and she also helped her family move out of the prepare to move out of the White House. She ha also held private parties for servicemen recuperating from their injuries in Vietnam. That and these soldiers were in area hospitals throughout Washington. Uh, these uh, they were shipped or they came in buses of fifty at a time, and uh, they were given uh, a reception uh, with uh, refreshments and the Marine Band played. Uh, music for them, and Linda and Lucy and their friends, uh, single women working at the White House, all played hostesses to these, these men during this time. Linda, or Linda Bird gave birth to Lucinda Deshay Robb on October 25th, 1968. She weighed seven pounds and eight ounces. When Lucinda was born, Linda called her husband in Vietnam in the middle of the night there so that they could decide on her name. And then when they decided on it, Linda announced that Lucinda is a combination of Linda and Lu Lucy's names. So that's very sweet. This is a really neat picture. This was taken in the White House. Uh, she's standing there holding Lucinda um, and uh, the Mary Cassatt uh, portrait of uh, the mother and children is behind her. I thought that was a really sweet photo. I wanted to show show that. Um, I also wanted to show you this. Uh, this is the this was in the newspapers uh, saying that Lucinda is wearing a yellow ribbon in her hair, uh, and Li Linda said that it's in memory of her. And it's for her daddy. Um, actually, I wanted to show you this. There's that same. There's the that yellow ribbon in her hair right there. <laughs> Very sweet. Um, because uh, both of their husbands were fighting in Vietnam, um, both daughters um, were sending letters and tapes, 
And it was back and forth, back and forth in the White House all that time. Um, and the, the, the uh, daughters were also living with their parents there in the White House as they helped them prepare to move. And this is um, a portrait of them taken, at, of course, at Christmas time in 1968. Linda thought she was going to be marrying a career military man, but she became a, a polit politician's wife, just like her mom. Um, Chuck was a member of the Democratic Party, and he served as the 64th governor of Virginia from 1982 to 1986, and as a United States Senator from 1989 to, until 2001. The Robs went on to have two more daughters, Catherine, that you see there on the le far left, she was born in 1970, and uh, Jennifer, who was born in 1978. And on the right hand side, that's Lucinda. That's from 2001. That's the, the last photo that I could really find of, of, the, four, of the five of them uh, together. So what would you have received yourself if you would have been um, there and in the White House attending the Rob uh, and Johnson wedding? Well, you would have gotten a program. As you saw in that one picture, you would have been standing in the East Room, no seating. Uh, and this, I've already realized, doesn't show up very well uh, because of the, the fabric uh, around this program. But it, it's got the date December 9th, 1967. And that is uh, in, an etching in silver of the White House. So it kind of looks wintry. Um, it just announces that this is the marriage of Linda Bird Johnson and Charles Spittle Robb. And it tells you that um, the chamber orchestra is playing and what the selections are. And then the rest of it um, tells you, uh, it gives, so that you can read along. It's, it's the service that's going to happen. And it, it even tells you when they say, what they will say and then, then what they're doing so that you can follow along. So this was one thing you would have gotten when you first arrived. Next, after, after the redo, you would have gotten your, your rice, um, your rice, and they were, of course, in red and green for Christmas. And um, these were obviously, these are not filled with rice. When we got these, they were filled with rice. Um, and uh, rice is not something that you want in a museum. It's, it's food and you don't want bugs and, and rodents in a museum. You're trying to avoid that. So the, the rice had to go. Also, uh, the rice was causing some problems with the tool. Um, I'm showing you two of the nicer uh, of these. Um, and I filled it with silica gel. That's that little bead stuff that you get like in shoes and that kind of stuff. That's what that is. It's just silica gel. Also, here's a teaching moment. You see this, um, this, this, uh, this white thread here. That is nylon. Um, that is tied to it. It's it's uh, taking the the it's easing the 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 ribbon so that the ribbon um, isn't holding the tool. And as you can see on this green one, again another teaching moment. You can see the this uh, these are 50, 54 years old going on, and um, you can see that this green uh, has faded. It was probably just as pretty as the green on the tool, but um, it has faded since. Ooh. And they kind of want to, they kind of want to leak. <laughs> there we go. The tool is, is very delicate, doesn't um, last long. Finally, you, you would have gotten your own little special piece of, of uh, pound cake inside this beautiful little heart cake box. And I hope you can see it. It's got their initials, L and C. And the R is in the middle for Rob. Right below that is the date, 12-9-67. Uh, I wanted to read to you um, what all was served at the reception. We do have that. That was in the paper, too, here. Um, the hot dishes were lobster uh, barquettes, uh, crab meat brochets, 
stuffed mushrooms, miniature shish kebab, quiche Lorraine, country ham, and biscuits. The cold platters were sliced smoked salmon sprinkled with capers, molds of chicken liver pate, iced shrimp with dressing, assorted raw vegetables with watercress and roquefort dress drip dip, and assorted cheeses and finger sandwiches. And if you if you were trying to watch your weight and you didn't want to eat a, eat a piece of pound cake, you could also have a, your, your choice of miniatures in uh, eclairs and cream puffs, chocolate roulades, strawberry apricot and blueberry tartlets, and pedophores. <laughs> so um, that was what was served at the wedding for food at the reception. So. Here you can see here, this is showing you that it was in the TV that she, uh, you could see at 5 p.m. that you could see taped portions of Lady Bird Johnson's and, uh, or Lady Bird, Linda Bird Johnson and Charles Robb's wedding and reception. And also some, there were gonna be taped highlights that night at 7 p.m. This was quite the thing. As with all weddings, the great and the small, there were final obligations. The official wedding photograph, congratulations from friends and relatives, and the cake cutting. For the first time, Captain Rob's parents were able to observe their son display his talent as a social aide. Captain Rob, with ease and grace, presented them to the 500 guests, many of whom were already familiar faces at the White House. Nearly a century of White House history was firmly spanned with the presence of Alice Roosevelt Longworth. 61 years earlier, she too was married in the East Room and attending her wedding, the former Nellie Grant, also married in the East Room in 1874. Captain and Mrs. Robb, it was an unforgettable, glorious day, filled with moments of tenderness. And for this, the most important house in the nation, it was one of those rare magic events that happen only once in a lifetime. Let us drink to life old and new, to our dear, beloved firstborn, Linda, 
to the love of her life, Chuck, and to all the Robs, whose family life will enlarge and enrich our own for every day of the very happy future that I know is going to be ours, and for the very happy tomorrow that we'll all share together. It was uh, really a pleasure to show you this. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, the, I think you can go on YouTube and watch the whole thing if you so want. Um, but it, it moves rather kind of slowly because it's 1967 and um, they're still learning the ropes on how to do TV. So it's it's really fun. And I think you can even watch Lucy's um, wedding on, you, the, you, on YouTube too. So uh, thank you so much for joining us and um, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.